Hey friends, it's Sam from DIY Huntress, and today I'm going to show you how I made this pattern plywood key holder, say that three times fast, using 100% recycled materials that I had laying around my workshop. Also, if you've been following me on social media, you will know that I teamed up with a whole bunch of amazingly talented makers for something called the Build at Home Challenge, where we all challenge each other to build things at home while we stay at home using scrap wood or leftover material. Seriously, their projects came out awesome. So definitely make sure to check out all of the projects in the Build at Home series on our playlist, which is linked here or here. I literally never know what side of the screen it's linked on and is also linked below this video in the video description. Hopefully you'll find something there that inspires you to build at home while we stay at home. But enough talking, I'm really, really excited about this project, so let's get started. I have said it before and I will definitely say it again, I am a certified scrap wood hoarder. If there were an award that was given to someone for hoarding pieces of wood that they do not want to throw out, I swear that I would win that award. But honestly, I can't even be mad about it. In fact, I am kind of proud of my scrap wood collection. I've made some pretty cool things using only scrap wood on my channel before. And really knowing about those projects and remembering all the cool things I've made are what really inspired this build at home challenge. I am hardcore dedicated to this social distancing thing right now and that has led to many project ideas, tons of binge watching YouTube for cool project ideas and also wanting to make projects in my shop. Specifically speaking though, I have been inhaling Omfob's amazing pattern plywood videos and I've been wanting to try to make a pattern plywood project for the longest time and this was the perfect opportunity to do so. So to get started I grabbed some quality three quarter inch birch plywood from my little scrap pile and I started to cut them into one inch wide pieces. Once all of my strips were cut, I then gathered them together and began an extensive glue up process that did take me a couple of days to complete overall. Now, Michael Alm does a much better job of explaining this process in his videos, so I definitely hope that you check them out because they are amazing. But essentially, in order to get different patterns on plywood, you do have to do several different steps of gluing up the plywood pieces. Luckily, my amazing friends at Dat Products agreed to partner up with me on this project, which made things really helpful because I did use a lot of glue when experimenting with different plywood patterns. So to get started on round one of what I believe was a three round glue up, I applied a gracious amount of glue and then spread it evenly across all of the boards. I originally tried to use my little popsicle stick method, that wasn't cutting it, so I used a foam roller instead. And then once I was happy with the spread, I then put all of the pieces together and clamped them overnight. And since I knew that I would be running this panel through the planer, I did use a damp rag just to wipe away any of the excess glue on one side of the panel so that I had a nice flat surface for the planer later. And once the panel was dry, I removed it from the clamps and ran it through my planer so that I had a nice smooth and solid surface to work with when I cut it. Now, a while back on Instagram, I shared a chevron patterned plywood thing that I was working on. That's a project that I'll be releasing later on in the distant future, but because I had already known how to do that, I did have a really easy time cutting this plywood into the next set of strips. Essentially, in order to make the chevron pattern, I needed to cut my plywood panel at 45 degree angles. And I started by making my first cut with my miter gauge on my table saw. And then I was able to cut the rest of the strips at one inch increments using my push block as well as the table saw. Honestly, I was super grateful for the push block at this part of the project because without it, those little pieces that are between the fence and the blade could have flown back and hit me. So if you're cutting small pieces on your table saw, you will definitely want some sort of push block or push stick to help you with this process. Once the pieces were cut, however, I then began laying them out on my clamps to prepare for the second step in the gluing process. And as you can see, I flipped every other piece to create a really cool chevron pattern. I then gave all of the pieces a really light sanding to just remove anything that could get stuck or mess up the pattern during glue up. I then applied an ample amount of glue the same way that I did in step one of the glue up. And then I clamped everything together and allowed it to dry overnight. 
super super important to note actually right here it is really important to make sure that these patterns line up as closely as possible before gluing them up otherwise if you want to use them for other patterns later those patterns will not make sense trust me on this one unfortunately you are about to see that problem come to life in a couple of minutes in this particular project but we'll get there eventually for now focusing on the present once that panel had dried overnight i brought it to the planer the same exact way as the first panel and then this time i actually brought it to the miter saw so I could cut one end completely square to bring over to the table saw afterwards. Now for the round three of this experimenting with pattern plywood thing, the next step was to cut the chevron pieces into strips. And since I used one inch increments earlier in the process, I cut these strips into one inch increments here as well. My goal from the start was to emulate this gorgeous diamond plywood pattern thing that Michael Alm has on his channel. And in order to do that now, the hope was that if you flip every other piece and place these pieces together, they will create diamonds. Now, mind you, I said the hope because here's what actually happened in reality my first time trying this out because the chevron patterns a were not lined up properly a lot of these diamonds just didn't work and also i totally lost track of the order of operations when i was cutting these strips and i probably should have kept them in order because i really wanted to do this the right way i kind of chalked this one up as a little bit of a loss in a learning experience moved them to the side to save for a different project to experiment with on a different day and started from square one something i did do differently the second time around though was that i decided that i wanted my diamond patterns to be larger so i cut all of my strips at two inch increments increments this time instead of one inch increments. I also made sure to keep them in order from the get-go so that I didn't mess up anything in terms of the glue up. I then made a really conscious effort during the glue up in round two to make sure that the pattern lined up perfectly before moving on to anything else. Otherwise, the rest of this process was exactly the same. I glued everything up, I clamped it, I left it overnight, I then brought it to the planer, and then the next day I brought it over to the miter saw, where I carefully and meticulously this time found square and then cut off that rough edge using the miter saw before bringing it over to my table saw. Now, since I cut the chevron strips into two inch wide strips this time, I had to then cut the diamond strips into two inch wide strips as well. But because I'm me, I obviously didn't learn my lesson the first time as I was transporting these strips to the table, I totally lost track of the order of operations. And once again, I was stuck with a jumbled mess that didn't go together. Luckily though, the first two pieces fit together like a glove and I was able to get a little creative with the process after that. I must have been super in the zone and trying to rack my brain doing this for a long time because at some point my other half of my little brother came to check on me and while they were there, they actually helped me brainstorm some creative ways to make this work. And we're done. What do you think of this as like a little shelf guy? And then trim this at oh, the table cool. saw. Maybe I should just keep it like that. That looks awesome actually. Because yeah. if you look at it from the top, it, actually looks it really continues. Good. It looks yeah. like... But then you put the hooks under or you put the hooks... I would put the hooks here. If that makes sense. And this is a wall holder. Yeah, exactly. Spare actually, change. that looks cool. <laughs> it like tricks your eyeball into thinking it matches when you well, do it Well, it matches... Way. It matches the, so you got a shimmy. What I'll probably end up doing is glue these, plane, go through, go through the planer, and then glue and clamp this, and just let it glue and clamp. Like I'm not gonna put any hardware in it. And then when you look at it from the top, it tricks your eye into thinking that this pattern's continuing because you can't see this, the seam. Oh, yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yes, okay, woo! All right, so shelf piece, you're on deck. Let me glue these up before I lose them again. <laughs> With the brainstorm session being a complete success, I brought over all of the pieces to the clamps and began to glue up the backer of what is going to be the key holder. I'm not gonna lie, I spent a lot of time here racking my brain, making sure that everything matched up, and then I was able to clamp everything together. I definitely kept coming back to check on it because I'm that obsessive, but it worked out really well. I then removed it from the clamps once it was dry and gave it a really light sanding to make way for the shelf, which I'm going to be gluing on next. To help align the shelf while I was trying to match up the patterns and to prevent it from slipping around when I put the clamps on, I did use a little bit of rapid fuse as well as wood glue. The rapid fuse actually worked as a temporary clamp so that the piece didn't slide around and then I was able to clamp the actual shelf to the piece with the wood glue as well and let that dry overnight. My goal here was for it to look like a continuous pattern from the top of the piece to the shelf itself and it worked out beautifully. 
And once it was dry, I then brought the entire piece over to my miter saw to square and clean up the edges. This honestly freaked me out so much I thought I was going to break it, but it held up like an absolute champ. And once it was cut down to its final size, I then gave it a really nice light hand sanding. Next, it was time to measure and mark where I wanted to put the hooks, and I decided to put them really close to the seams because I loved how symmetrical that looked, and once I was happy with the placement, I then pre-drilled all of the holes for the hooks and dry fit them. And since I was happy with the fit, I then removed the hooks from the actual key ring and then finished the entire piece. I really wanted the plywood to pop here, so I decided to go with a medium walnut danish oil for the finish, and I feel like it was an awesome choice. I then reapplied the hooks and wanted to be done, but then I noticed this. I guess at some point in this process, I took a super chunk out of the shelf. You probably can't actually notice it unless I point it out, but it was bothering me a lot. And in the past, I had used this premium wood filler that's tintable so that you can tint it to match whatever you're working with. And I decided to try it for this piece because I knew that regular wood putty would be too light. So essentially, I tinted the filler using two different brown tones, and then I applied the filler to the chunk that was missing and allowed it to dry. And as it dried, I moved on to attaching the D-ring hooks to the back of the key holder. To do this, I measured and marked where I wanted the holders to go and made sure that they were symmetrical on both sides. I then pre-drilled the holes for the D-ring holders and then wanted to attach them, but realized I drilled the holes in the wrong spot, had to redo it, and then attach the holders in the right spot. And then once that wood filler was completely dry, I hand sanded it flat and it blended super beautifully. And then I just gave the piece one final coat of Danish oil to make sure that it looked pristine. From start to finish, this project was an absolute learning experience for me, and I'm so happy with the way it turned out. I'm even more excited that I was able to make it happen using scrap wood and some leftover materials from my workshop, and I didn't even have to leave my home once to build this thing. And in all seriousness, huge, huge thank you to Michael Alm for being there to answer my questions about pattern plywood and for completely inspiring this build. He is amazing, so please go check him out. And speaking of checking out other projects, also make sure to check out all of the other amazing projects in this Build at Home Challenge series. They are in the playlist that is below this video, as well as listed on the blog post for this project. Overall, I hope you guys loved this project as much as I did. I hope it inspired you to build something with leftover materials in your own home. If you enjoyed this project, please make sure to subscribe to my channel for more projects. But until next time, friends, thank you always for the support and happy DIYing. Thank you.